Hi everyone, I'm here today for day three of the five day challenge. And I'm here with Dr. Reed Robinson. Welcome, Reed. Hey, Dr. Keenan, how are you doing? Nice to see you again. Wonderful. So Reed is a chiropractor in Bermuda, Bermuda Spine and Sport, and he is the owner and manager of the clinic. And also he's my chiropractor. <laughs> Full disclosure. <laughs> <laughs> So Reed, thanks for joining us and I'll let you get right into um, how you've approached the five day challenge under each topic. All right, so um, I, I focused mostly on one topic, uh, the rest of recovery. So I, um, my background is human evolution and um, chronic disease, how it relates uh, to uh, hunter gatherers and, or, and versus the modern day uh, lifestyle that we live. And as everybody knows, um, we, we have an epidemic, uh, pandemic of chronic disease. And uh, so I, I kind of live my life a bit cyclically. Uh, so in the winter, I tend to eat more animal products, uh, less fruits and vegetables. Um, and then in the summer, sorry, in the winter, I do that. And then in the summer, I tend to eat uh, very heavy in the vegetables and fruits and significantly less on the animal products. And, uh, but also my sleep cycles change. Um, in the winter, I have a little bit more downtime uh, because I love the great outdoors. So I don't usually come in until it's dark. And uh, so, so my, my big one right now that I'm focusing in is uh, rest and recovery. Um, but I'll, I'll go through the different uh, aspects that I've done so far in the other areas. Um, and these are ones that I pretty much follow year round anyway, I, I'd say. Um, the, I've just gotten back into, cause I kind of skipped it for a few weeks unintentionally, uh, but gratitude, uh, especially around this time of the year and, uh, just kind of reflecting back on how fortunate I am, uh, having a roof over my head, uh, great food, phenomenal friends and my work family who I, I love and adore. Um, so I don't have a lot of stressors in my life compared to most of us out there, you know, you know, thinking about the people going through the war in Ukraine and, um, people who are losing their jobs and, and I'm just so incredibly, incredibly grateful, uh, for my life. Um, and I have a, a job that I love to do. I wake up every morning and, and I look forward to going to it, uh, and seeing people and interacting. So it's, uh, that's one of one of my highlights that I've, I've done this winter as well. Um, another one in the, uh, was it the narrow feeding window? Yeah, I'll just come back though to hear about your yeah. gratitude though, Reed. You know, I think yeah. it's so wonderful because you're right at this time of year, you know, we're moving, everyone's kind of going into resolutions, but a lot of people in December kind of look back what went well during the year, what can they be so happy for? And when we really take that time to reflect and appreciate Wow, you know, even though maybe some things kind of go wrong during our year, there's always some little things to be thankful for. And, uh, you know, I'd love to hear you say that you love your job and that you get up because there's so few people now, I think, that really just have a passion for what they do. And, you know, we see that and that brings on stress when people are not enjoying their work. So that's great. And I'm sure and I hear that your patients really feel that because of how they enjoyed the time when they go for you for sessions. So that's good. Yeah, oh, thanks. Thank you. It's nice to hear that. <laughs> um, yeah, and also uh, living in such a beautiful place, uh, you know, in, in Bermuda, you know, a five minute commute door to door. Uh, you get to see the beautiful sunshine pretty routinely. Uh, I mean, just, it, I, yeah, I feel so fortunate. And I do that. I call it the attitude of gratitude. Um, I follow an international inspirational speaker and human behaviorist called Dr. John Demartini. And uh, if there's ever anybody, in, in my opinion, if there's ever anybody who's figured out life, I would say he's pretty close to it. He's, he's written tons of books, over 30 books, I believe. Um, he does seminars, breakthrough experience. And, uh, and so he calls it the attitude of gratitude. So every night before I fall asleep, you know, I, I, I lay down, lights are off, close my eyes, and I, and I just, give gratitude for those great things that occurred during the day and what I'm looking to forward to the next, uh, the next morning. So. That's wonderful. And I'll share that for those too. I'll make sure we put it in the. Okay. okay great. Yeah. Post it for people. Yeah. So what about your narrowed feeding window? Cause I know you're all about food and nutrition. <laughs> yeah. 
So uh, as I was talking about, I, I live quite cyclically through the year. And uh, one of the things it's um, almost a daily routine is um, what, what's termed as intermittent fasting now. Uh, so I do have a relatively small feeding window. Uh, I usually start to eat uh, or get any sort of calories in at around 12, 45 or so. Um, and that's Monday through Friday. And then on the weekends, I typically don't eat until one or two until I start to get hungry. And um, sometimes I just skip lunch altogether because I'm busy and having fun doing whatever I'm doing. And, uh, and then I finish dinner. I, I tend to eat a little bit later because I do quite a bit of things after work. So I usually don't finish dinner till about 8, 8.30. Um, and then I do my very best not to snack after that. And it really does help with my sleep. I've, I've noticed, uh, especially this last month and a half, that if I, if I don't have a little snack before bed, I, I'm definitely not going to wake up during the middle of the night kind of thing. So, so yeah, that, and I, and the other thing is, um, you know, it took me a while to transition to being metabolically flexible. And, uh, I used to get to, to the point many years ago when I was a carbitarian, uh, that I was a, uh, I would get quite hangry. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. I was in that phase too, and I never realized how bad it was until I got out of it and could look back and see, wow, that's how I used to live. Yeah. Yeah. I, and it's funny. You just don't think of it at the time, but now I, I can be hungry. I've, I've, fa I've fasted up to five days before without any calories. And, you know, while it's uncomfortable at certain periods during the day, it's totally tolerable and it, and it doesn't affect my psychology uh, anywhere near as much. So I love being metabolically flexible. It's, it's, it's very liberating actually. Very liberating. And knowing that I'm not going to die if I don't eat. <laughs> And that's what people, you know, sometimes when they're sick, they're like, I'm not eating. I'm like, that's okay. Your energy is going somewhere else. It doesn't need to go to food. And, uh, but knowing that we can get by without it, like, I still remember the road trips, you know, you're on a car trip and then you just need to have that snack and, and you're not so pleasant anymore when you don't get the snack. And now to be able to go with, without it's, it's a wonderful feeling. It is. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. So, and then I I think the next one was autonomic parent. That's right, autonomic parent. Yeah. Uh, so there's a few things that I do pretty consistently, but I, as we were talking previously, um, I love food. I I am a foodie through and through, <laughs> and because probably partly because I have a shorter feeding window, and partly because we cook fresh food pretty much every single night. Um, it's pretty rare we have takeout or go out for dinner. And, um, and what we make is very tasty. So, and every once in a while, I catch myself wolfing stuff down, you know, it just tastes so good. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I've been very focused, especially about, I think it was the end of the summer on, on chewing and making sure I eat what I drink and drink what I eat. Have you, have you heard of that one? I haven't heard that expression, no. Uh, a really, really cool expression I heard many, many years ago. So basically, when you're eating more solid foods, you chew to the degree that it's liquid. So you can drink what you're eating. And, um, and then also, when you're drinking something, something fluid, you're not just sort of gulping it down, but you're, you're taking a mouthful and you're chewing it. And um, from my limited understanding in digestion, um, I, I know a bit, but um, we have different chewing patterns for different types of foods, and that will stimulate your digestive enzymes in specific ways. So more that you'll develop your uh, or secrete more salivary amylase in your mouth for the starches when you chew in a specific pattern, and then also for proteins and, and releasing the um, the, the acids that help to digest proteins. So, and it I makes a big difference on how I, my stomach feels because I'll, I'll tend to overeat or, or sorry, eat too quickly. And then I'll still be hungry for 20 minutes after. And, uh, but my stomach will feel a little bit full and not comfortable. So yeah, that speed of eating. Right. And, and that's it. You know, you hear people say, and one, our fifth thing is, you know, to slow down. 
Um, and many years ago, I started putting my fork down between bites. So I, you know, I'd eat and chew and I put my fork down and then I don't get the next mouthful until that mouthful is swallowed. Um, but it really does take time for those digestive juices to start to kick in. And so a lot of times we see like bloating and gas and everything, it's because people yeah. are woofing, woofing their food down. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> so, so, slow down with, with many yeah. things in our life, right? Slow down to appreciate, and now we've got slow down to, to appreciate your meals. Yes, yeah, exactly. Apparently we, we don't get a very long life. I know, I know the average life expectancy is 84 years. Uh, my goal is 116. But my my plan is to live 200 years in that 116 years. So, <laughs> so that's why I think I, I speed eat as well, because I'm trying to get to the next thing that I want to enjoy. <laughs> that's right. It's all about the experiences that we have, right? Yes, Getting as many yeah. experiences in 200 years of experiences into 116 years. <laughs> exactly. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and and what was the, the next, uh, we'll come back to rest and recovery yes. and um, the, the joyful movement. Um, I uh, so just reading it, the, the dancing in your inner child. Well, uh, New Year's Eve, um, I, I used to go out dancing quite a bit, and the last 15 years I haven't. And uh, went out to a, a party, uh, um, New Year's Eve party, and I forgot how much fun dancing is. And uh, I literally danced for five hours straight, uh, nonstop. Yep. <laughs> and uh, such a such a, a great feeling after I just, I felt, other than being a little tired because I didn't get home until very early the next morning. But, um, but uh, yeah, such a great feeling. But one of the other movements uh, that I find, I don't know if it really brings me joy while I'm doing it, but I definitely feel um, energized and refreshed after is um, trying to mimic those hunter-gatherer movements that they would they would have. You know, they don't go for a five kilometer run on a flat surface with shoes and keep the same pace and their strides exactly the same and the heart rate's the same the whole time. You know, they've got varied terrain, varied environments. You know, they don't, they sprint, they walk, they climb a little bit, jump, run, sprint kind of thing. And um, in the winter, so I've just transitioned into sort of my winter exercise routine. And uh, one of my favorite ones is going down to the beach. And if you ever see a, a really bizarre looking person, bear crawling and Spider-Man crawling on the on the beach, don't be scared. He's harmless. <laughs> But uh, I'll do those sort of more natural movements. So I'll, I'll um, be sort of doing fart lacking along the beach, uh, running, jogging, uh, walking, sprinting. And then I'll drop down and do some like bear crawls and I'll see how far I can run on all fours, uh, like feet, feet and hands, um, or uh, try and do awkward movements. So I'll, I'll sort of, um, this one, nobody sees me. So I always make sure I do it in the corner of the beach where nobody is, but <laughs> I'll do these kind of weird twists in the sand and see how flexible I can, I can be not for very long. Um, but, uh, yeah, just trying to vary my movements. I'll try and do a couple of handstands. And, uh, the great thing is you got the water right there. So you can just jump in the water and wash the sand off and, uh, between the movements and the cold water, oh, Feels so good. Very regenerative. Well, you've just given me a challenge here. I'm going to do some bear crawls. I was swimming at the beach today and uh, because the cold water feels good. It's still like, what, 18, so 19 good. degrees here in Bermuda um, in the water. But the bear crawls, it's great. And I know what you mean that so many people, you know, they go to the gym and it's just on the treadmill all the time or on, they're on this bike, but they're really not challenging their body dynamics right, right and so yeah. this is i think what you're talking about with these kind of hunter gather type movements um you know wh lift push pull you know jump and and vary it up a little bit yeah yeah and and balance work like on the sand uh you know just trying to balance on one leg and doing certain movements is always good okay. so yeah. Wonderful. So now tell us about your key passion right now, which is rest and recovery. Cause I know you're giving me some tips on this that you already mentioned earlier. So <laughs> yeah, great. Um, so yeah, in the winter, typically hunter gatherers, um, 
especially away from the equatorial region, obviously there's uh, less daylight. So they're spending more time in the dark and they don't have bright blue LED lights to keep them up all night and all these screens and everything. So they tend to have a lot of um, uh, peaceful, relaxing, uh, low, low energy time. Um, you know, a lot of communicating with the rest of the tribe and that. And so we, we have a couple strategies that we do, particularly in the winter. Um, one of them is on Wednesday nights, we call it electricity free night. So if sometimes we'll, if, if the wind's really howling and it's raining, then we, we won't barbecue, but most of the time we'll barbecue that night. And uh, so we don't need any, any lights or anything. Sometimes we'll get a head torch if, if it's a little too dark, but you can kind of make out. And it's good because it, it helps train your eyes in the darkness as well, because again, we're used to having these bright lights all day. And then at night, well, we just keep the lights on. So we have this electricity free night. So we usually barbecue and then we just have some candles around. And if it's bad weather, like it has been this last few weeks, uh, we'll, we'll eat inside um, at the dining table. And then we'll sit on the couch um, with a couple candles going and just connect and chat and rub each other's feet. And uh, usually Jen falls asleep in 10 minutes. So, <laughs> but... <laughs> But um, just having, you know, no light other than the candlelight for that evening and, and uh, kind of reconnecting again because we have such a busy lifestyle. So that's, that's one of the things that we've really enjoyed. Um, I love that idea and setting a time for it. It's like, you know, people think of couples date night or whatever it may be. Yeah. But this is like, but a date night that you can really reconnect to your base, right? And just keeping things super, super simple. Because we often overcomplicate it, um, yeah. but this yeah. town sounds like it's really coming down to the simplicity level. Yeah, yeah, and and also being bored. It, it's it's hard to be bored with uh, with Jen in the room, but um, you know, if I was to do it on my own, which is pretty rare, um, just being bored and just sitting and thinking, or or giving gratitude, or you know, planning for the future, um, it's nice just to be peaceful. Mm. So. Great idea. Yeah. So yeah, and, and along those lines, we have a few other strategies. Um, at right now about 6.30, 7 o'clock, we, we turn off all overhead lights, uh, unless dinner is a little bit late and we keep enough light on in the kitchen just so we know what we're doing with sharp knives. And, um, but then all the overhead lights are off and we have one um, incandescent, uh, sort of a yellowy bulb, the Edison bulbs, if, mm -hmm. uh, if you know what those are the old old school retro bulbs mm -hmm. and it's I want to say it's about I think it's 40 or 60 watts so it's not very I think it's 40 watts 40 watts and we have it in a lamp in the corner of our great room so our kitchen dining and living room are all one room and so we just have it in the corner of the uh, dining area um, so it's easy enough for us to see when we're eating and then um, we just use that for the rest of the night. So there's no overhead lights, there's no junk light, the LEDs, um, except for, so we don't have screen time. Uh, you know, we put away our screens uh, at, by seven. And then- Good for you, that is- Except, except. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> except for TV. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But no gadgets, um, like no phones after seven. Yeah, yeah absolutely, yeah, Good absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and and Jen's much better at that. I I have um, a research forum that I, I'm on on Facebook that I, I love reading some of the latest research. So sometimes I might get a little hooked on something if it was a good publication recently. But um, but but definitely by eight, I'm not on any phone or screen or anything like that. And so now, when you're watching TV, are you wearing some of the 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 glasses? Oh yeah. Yeah, the tree dark. So typically what I do is, so we turn the backlight in the TV down to as low as it'll go. So it's quite, it's quite dim. Um, and we have a little bit of an older TV. I think mean, it's like five or six years old. So it has that option, um, but it's, it doesn't go super dull. Um, and we, and then I, I tend to go to bed a little bit later. So I, 15 minutes before I go to bed, I put on the tree darks. <laughs> which I'll show you. Ah. Yeah, so I look like Dave Asprey now. And, um, <laughs> and what time What time do you put them on, Reed? 
uh, at 10, 15, 10, 30. Okay, so and kind of just toward bedtime. Okay. Yeah, and about, and I, and, and I'm not exaggerating, within about two minutes, I start yawning. And I don't feel tired. This is this is the thing. Before I put them on, I don't really feel tired. I'm a bit of a night owl. And uh, I put them on. And within a few minutes, I'm starting to yawn. Uh, last night, I fell asleep sitting up with them on. <laughs> so, and, and I'm like within a few minutes. So this, I'm not sitting up there for a long time because I give it 15 minutes and then I go to bed because I, I start feeling really tired. And, um, and uh, yeah, and, and I go to bed and that really kind of gets me started to have my brain kind of slowly turn off and turn down so I can uh, fall asleep. Yeah. I like that. So do you wear these like while you're brushing your teeth or it's just kind of as you're prepping, like in the bed kind of thing? Uh, it's the last thing I do before I fall asleep. So I, I have my routine as, uh, you know, if you, if you do any sort of uh, Googling on, you know, how to get better sleep, you know, the first one is have a routine. So I have my routine, um, you know, if, I, if I'm watching a little bit of TV at the end of the evening, which is probably most nights, I kind of help just turn my brain off. And, I've, and then I brush my teeth, um, six, probably about half an hour before I go to bed, maybe an hour. Um, and we usually chat for a little bit, kind of catch up what's going on for the next day. And then Jen goes to bed, put my glasses on about 15, 20 minutes after she goes to bed. And, and, uh, and I'm in bed in 15 minutes. And I, when I hit this, my pillow, the head hits the, head, hits the pillow, I would say I'm asleep within about 15 minutes. So, so it really, but the, the, the glasses are by far the best out of all the hacks. That's the best for, for me. Wow. And how does it impact re when you, um, cause you wear an aura ring as well? Yes. Does it, yes, do. do you find it that you can see the difference like in your REM or your deep sleep when you have worn your glasses? Yeah. yeah. yeah my, the, I have a, what was the, what's the terminology? I fall asleep much quicker. Okay. So in terms of my, I think it, it and I think the best thing so far that I've noticed for my sleep efficiency would be not, not taking, drinking any alcohol. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's, by, that's out of everything. That's the biggest thing that affects my sleep. And then the next one is using the glasses actually. But I think, you know, these glasses, you know, so many people have sleep problems and we look at health and healing, like you as a chiropractor, like if someone is not healing from an injury, we have to ask why. And sleep yeah. is the fundamental thing, right? You don't exactly. sleep, you really, you don't heal. And, um, you know, I really try to reinforce this too to my patients is that you need to turn the screen time down and everything. But for some people, again, people want a quick fix, not that there is ever a quick fix, but the true dark lenses, I think that's going to be another one. I think that I'm going to, thank you. I'm going to introduce that more yeah. to my patients and, and get them that's to perfect. try it. Great. And I'd also recommend, recommend uh, I just listened to a podcast with Peter Atia. Do you follow oh, yeah. him? I love oh, yeah. him. Yeah. He, he's, oh, he is one of the smartest people I have ever, <laughs> I wish I got to know him, but. Well, him and Huberman, like the Huberman podcast. Yeah. Both those guys. yeah. It, it, they just, it, their, their memory, memory retention is unbelievable. And so he just did a podcast recently on sleep with probably one of the top uh, sleep experts in North America. And it does get a little bit into the details, but I don't, it's definitely not a, uh, over a lay person's head. But they talk about some of the strategies that are very helpful for sleep and um, what things negatively impact sleep as well. And uh, I, I think I pretty much knew most of them, but it was good to kind of reiterate them because, you know, sometimes you sort of forget or you, you, they drop off your radar so you don't incorporate them into your routine. Um, so one of the ones that I didn't have in my routine is, uh, especially because I'm waking up in the dark now, is looking at the sunlight first thing in the morning. You know, not, not directly staring at the sun, just, you know. <laughs> But um, yeah, because I'm I'm usually getting to work just 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 as the sun is rising. So, so yeah, yeah, it's about seven twenty in the morning now in Bermuda because that's something I've been doing for a while, and then I realized oh it's really good for me too. But I love just sitting out there in the mornings, and we know it's great for melatonin, right? So you know when you get that early morning sun, then you're yeah. signaling to your body okay, let's get that melatonin sinking when it should, and then 
it gives that nice long-term effect of helping sleep at nighttime. Yeah. And way better and healthier than coffee. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'll share, I'll get that link from you and I'll be sure to share that too for the group. So they might want to listen to the podcast. Sure. Yeah, that's great. And then there's a couple other things I did. I actually wrote down one of them. Um, oh, um, in terms of lighting in the house, uh, what we did when we renovated our house, um, we did get LED lights, but we we got the lights that um, you're able to change the, the it's called the temperature, the, the color of them. So you can get as low as nowadays, I think on the market, 2,700 Kelvin, and which is like um, an ambery orange, uh, they call it yellow light or amber light. And then what you get in warehouses with that bright blue, blue, blue light, and a fake light, um, that's about 5,000 Kelvin. And so we just made sure that we got all of our lights that were on the lowest Kelvin that we could find, which were, which were 2,700 at the time. And um, I believe Dave Asprey um, is working on LED lights now that are not going to be as junky. So they're going to have more full spectrum uh, of, of the light spectrum. And then I believe they're going to be programmable so that they mimic the uh, sunset, which would be great. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that guy's into so much. And if people haven't don't know who Dave Asprey is, Google Dave Asprey Bulletproof and you yeah. <laughs> learn a lot from him. <laughs> But in terms of the lights, so, because I often wonder this in my house. So when you say LED, so like I have a lamp by my bed and I keep thinking, I think I need to change that light bulb out. So what um, do I, can I buy this in Bermuda? What do I go looking for at the store? Yeah, well, I recommend if you're, if you're spending time in bed, but it's, it's before sleeping. So you don't really have to be very aware. Is, right, just read, actually, you know, just something yeah, to read. I, I get a red incandescent light, like a, like a, 40 watt or something is a lower, lower wattage. Um, but if you get more of a red light and you'll, if you're, if you're a, a, an avid camper, backpacker, through pack, uh, through hiker, um, a lot of people so they wear their headlights and they'll have the white light, but then they'll have a little red one on the side. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice um, if you're camping and somebody has a red headlight, uh, or if you're wearing your, your red headlight, it doesn't give you the sunspots and it doesn't give you, um, it doesn't wake you up, uh, which, which is super handy. So yeah, we've, we've got, um, we don't have any uh, lights, well, we don't use our lights in our room, but we have one of those progression clocks that- um, oh, For the, the morning wake up? up. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so it starts off red and then it slowly turns to orange and it gets brighter and brighter. Um, I believe the brand is Philips Oops. is, um, and it's a progression alarm clock, uh, light progression. I can send you a link for that as well. Wow. This is great because again, sleep is fundamental. It is key. Whatever we can do above and beyond like metabolic health, insulin resistance, healing, cancer, you kind of yeah. name weight gain, like you name it, sleep. Yeah. You have to mental work. clarity. Yeah. Mood. Yeah. Mental health, anxiety, all of those things. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And, and if you, you know, I'm sure you have patients if you, and when you're talking to them about their sleep health, many of them watch TV in bed all night. So now their, their bodies are associating the bed with TV and not sleep. So, um, so I, I have a little saying, um, if it doesn't begin with best, don't do it in bed. So that's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh pass that on to some patients too <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> i definitely yeah. tell them to get the tvs out of the bedroom it's like no way you know this and you know parents too it's funny because some parents at christmas came in and said oh they got their kids these tvs for their bedrooms and i'm like it's one of the yeah. worst things i think you could do for a child is to get yeah. a tv and put it in the room right yeah and then they're laying in bed in the hunched text neck position and uh and they're doing that for two hours before they fall asleep and and of course then your neck and your upper back are going to pay the price for it and oof. yeah that's right i'm sure you have enough business you still you don't need more and more people coming in with neck strain <laughs> and everything else that goes on in that region yeah well during the lockdown that was the our by far the biggest complaint it was neck shoulders from laptops uh um, phones and slouched on the couch or on in bed watching TV and laptops. Yeah. yeah. 
So do we do we get everything on your rest and recovery checklist? You had so many. I amazing think so. Things. That was uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, and then um, uh, this on Doctor Google has this as well, of course. Is um, a nice cool bedroom. Oh, cool. So, yes. Yeah. And in that podcast that I just mentioned, um, he he suggested uh, things like having a hot shower before you go to bed, and I, and he didn't say a time frame um, how far in advance. And the the theory is when you have a hot shower, it causes vasodilation in your skin, so your blood's going to your skin. It's giving off a lot of that core heat to try and cool down, and so I guess it's sort of you're you're warming your your um, body temperature, your your skin temperature up, where your car, your core temperature starts to drop a little bit, and and I think as your core temperature drops just a tiny bit, that's when you start to fall asleep, and that's when you get more tired. Right. So Figures having a, a cool dark bedroom. Right. Yeah. And I think the shower, when I looked at it before, like an hour or so, because you're quite warm oh. initially, and then it's as it starts to kind of plummet. And yeah. you're right, as the temperature starts to go down and the coolness, like they even have now, some people buy these cool mats, right? That you can put yeah. under your mattress. Yeah, um, super eight and chili pad. And, yes, yeah. that's what it's, chili pad, yeah. To regulate yeah. the temperature, so. Yeah. Wow, okay, so this is it. It's a focus on sleep. My patients are gonna hear a lot more about this. Hopefully a lot of them that are watching right now too. Um, so Reed, this is amazing. Thank you so much for sharing your tips. Like, I think it's really important because you know, a lot of us, we see patients every day, but we do practice what we preach, right? Like, cause if yeah. we want our patients to be feeling well, we've had to go through the struggles. You know, we do the research, we, we learn what works well for us. And then we want to be able to share that knowledge. So Absolutely. thanks for, for sharing for everybody here in the group today. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me on. It's been great to connect with you again. Yes. And before you go though, I do need your word of the day. So, because people are submitting for these Amazon gift cards where they might be able to buy some of this stuff that we spoke about. So what would oh, your yes. word of the day be? Thrive. Oh, I love that. Thrive. 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 Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> well, well, thanks so much, um, Reed and, um, stay tuned. Everybody we will be posting all kinds of links for what we discussed today. Uh, take care and I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye for now. Thank you. Have a great evening. Thanks. Bye.